the very, very, very best gift you could give is something like a box of cookies. Hi, I'm Susan Spungen. If I could have no other dessert, it would just be cookies. I love cookies. I now consider myself a mad cookie scientist and a cookie artist. Actually, when I first came to New York, I started making cookie boxes, and I just loved picking out different recipes and then putting them all together in a box and then giving them to friends. There are a couple in this group that are completely addictive. I really wanted a range of different kinds of flavors, different kinds of looks. Everything has to be rolled together in one little perfect package. That's all I have to say about cookie boxes. <laughs> I actually have an art background, so I particularly like applying art to cookies. This cookie was inspired by a collage by Ellsworth Kelly. Brush strokes cut into 20 squares and arranged by chance. For me, it's like becomes just a blank canvas for painting. You don't need to have like a big, thick layer of royal icing. You can see how the line dissolves into a flat, flat surface. I find it a whole lot easier to just dip the cookies and it's okay if my fingers get a little icing on it. And then I shake it back and forth. I might take a little peek and then flip it over. We want to get the icing right to the edge and also break any air bubbles that might have been in the icing. And if there's anything that dripped over the edge, you just clean it up. You really want them to be absolutely bone dry before you start painting on it. And then I'm using both petal dust and luster dust, which are these beautiful powdery pigments. Peppermint extract, it's almost like a watercolor wash and the alcohol just immediately evaporates and all you're left with is the pigment on the cookie. And you're just gonna paint lines across the cookies and then we're gonna rearrange them randomly. <laughs> Maybe my favorite of all of these cookies definitely the most addictive. What we're doing is making honeycomb candy and pouring it right on top of the shortbread. So it becomes fused together in this two layer. I'm not even gonna call it a bar because we end up cutting them up into kind of random shards. Working with sugar is, you know, it's a little dangerous. Any kind of candy, the thing you have to be really super careful about is undissolved sugar crystals because then like the whole thing can crystallize. Take a brush to wash down these sugar crystals on the side of the pan until it comes to a boil and is all clear. Then you don't have to do it anymore. Sprinkle on the baking soda and just whisk it like a couple of times just to make sure it's mixed in and then stop. Get it in here as quickly as I can without spreading. You can do this a little bit, but if it doesn't go all the way to the edges, do not be concerned in the least. So that's it, and then we let it cool. We're gonna break it all up into pieces and put chocolate on it. I like to just take a tip of a paring knife and break it into pieces. That's why it's called honeycomb, because it actually looks like a honeycomb. This one can be a little messy, but that's part of the fun. Mmm. My favorite. Poppy seed blood orange window cookies, which are, I think, an essential part of any cookie box. The poppy seed cookie is so versatile and goes with really any flavor. I've used blood orange marmalade as the filling because the color and the flavor is so beautiful, but you could use orange marmalade or any other jam that you like. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> 
What would a cookie box be without a chocolate cookie, I ask you? I happen to love a combination of ginger and chocolate together, which isn't always the first thing you might think of to put with chocolate, but it gives it this really great holiday spin on a chocolate cookie. It's got little slivers of candy ginger on top and fresh grated ginger inside, and they're just really good. <laughs> What I was really going for here was to have a crunchy, not too sweet cookie that could be dipped. This is a great one to have like your kids help with because it's just like playing with Play-Doh. Make Play-Doh snakes. That is the best way to describe it. A little bit thinner than a pencil, I'd say. So the key with this one is just not to press down too hard. So see like that started to break a little bit. So I just like push it back together. Most of this is gonna be dipped in chocolate and it's gonna cover up a multitude of sins. It might get a little wonky, but then I decided that was really part of their charm. But they're really, really fun to eat and they're fun to dip. Pop these in the freezer now, just so they hold their shape a little bit better in the oven. And that's true for any cookie dough. Milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate with matcha and white chocolate with freeze-dried raspberries. Kind of put it on and then take off the excess or else it'll kind of be laying in a puddle of chocolate so i also kind of scrape some off the back just so it doesn't have too much so even though you want to sprinkle these while they're still wet it's actually good to let them set up a little bit because otherwise the gravity of the nuts or whatever you put on it will kind of force them to slide off really nice way to finish off a cookie box. This is like another shortbread type dough, which is such a simple dough. These are cookie stamps, which are really popular these days, and they're really fun to use. Take your dough, it should be cold, but not ice cold, because it needs to be pliable enough to use the cookie stamp. And you dip the cookie stamp, get it kind of centered under the stamp. You might get a stiff neck when you're doing this, because you do have to kind of Look, you want to make sure it's even on all sides, and then you have to just sort of gently peel it off. Just by trimming it with the cookie cutter, you get a really nice clean cookie. All right, that's a little off center, but who cares? These should be glazed when they're warm from the oven. You know, until they're like cool enough to handle. So put the glaze on, and I let the excess drip onto the next cookie that I'm gonna glaze. So you want a thin coating of glaze, not one that's gonna obscure the shapes that you just worked so hard to create. And these are like really melt in your mouth shortbread. Mm. So good. This is a cookie for people who do not plan ahead and who need a cookie fast. You can have this from like dough to table in a really short period of time. You see how my dough is a little too hard right now? That is like a great way to get started. If it starts cracking, just push it together. Beautiful thing about this cookie is that it's supposed to be freeform. You could make it any shape you want. It's one big cookie that we're gonna cut afterwards. We're going for about a quarter inch thick here. We wanna make sure we're moving it while it's still pretty cold so it's not sticking. So we're gonna dock. That's a fancy word for poking it with a fork. This will let the steam escape as the cookie is baking. I'm gonna brush it with a little bit of egg white just to make the topping stick and give it a little bit of a crunchy finish. And if you don't want to add the seeds, you could try sesame seeds or even just sugar. I like to slice it into bars, and you have to do that kind of when it's pretty warm, or it might like kind of crack and crumble. But the alternative is just let people break them. See, some of those broke, but it's okay. This is the other one that I'm addicted to thumbprint cookies, pistachio, hazelnut, and pecan. You can take your choice or you can make all three. 
It's completely interchangeable in this recipe. I mean, some nuts are a little bit oilier and they might make the cookie spread just a tad more. I do use my thumbs. Um, sometimes people like to say use a wooden spoon handle. The truth is when these cookies get thumb printed, they're not really that hot yet. It's halfway through the baking time. They don't kind of spread out as much and I like the little craggy cracks that happen when you stick your thumbs in. I love the variety. You could make a cookie box of just thumb prints. I know that sounds like kind of a strange name. It's named after the coffee house drink called a Dirty Chai, which is an espresso and a chai mixed together. So redolent with all of these nutty warm flavors like brown butter, coffee, a whole bunch of spices. And this kind of cookie that kind of explodes under a sugary crust is sometimes called an earthquake cookie. So it really has a real holiday taste, this cookie. It's like, it's definitely the spice cookie in the cookie box. Well, first of all, I've been playing around with marbling black and white tahini for the last couple of years. But these end up tasting kind of like halva by the time they're baked. Made one dough, and then we separate it into two thirds and one third, and we mix some white tahini into some of it and black tahini into the other third. I'm gonna cut each piece in half. And we're just gonna pat it out. It's not really like super important that it's square or anything like that. It's almost like smearing it. You're just kind of trying to spread it out more or less. What you don't want to do when you're marbling these two colors together is uh, just turn it into a muddle. You want to keep some separation with the color so you can get a nice swirl. Take this layered piece of dough and lightly knead it, but less than you might think because if you do too much, you'll just lose any sense of marbling. You don't want to chill this dough in advance before marbling it. You want it soft, straight out of the mixer. But then when it's time to put it in the pan, we're just gonna very lightly knead them together and get it in as evenly as possible. I want to avoid any air spaces. I really like using the back of my knuckles to do this kind of thing. Once this is very chilled, brush some egg white on all sides of it, and I'm gonna use some coarse sanding sugar, black sanding sugar, which looks really cool. Then it adds that like sugary crunch to the edge. Look how easy that is. We don't have to roll out and cookies and use a cookie cutter. And those are gonna be our marble slabs. And then we bake them, and then they're done. These are what I call a self-decorating cookie. <laughs> The hardest part of doing this is mixing the cool colors. This time we're using a confectioner sugar glaze. To get these sort of muted, beautiful tones, you might just use like a little bit of a complementary color to kind of dull it down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this red, just so I don't overdo it, because once you put the color in, it's really hard to take it out. And then I'm gonna add some blue to that, and then I'm gonna add some of that back. But as you mix, you're gonna see the color just takes on a whole new character. Yeah, I like it. Dip the cookies in the very same way that we did the royal icing. That was really my goal with this cookie, is to just make these beautiful solid color cookies, which is very much in the tradition of this kind of art. You don't need any special decorating talent except for this one basic cookie dipping technique to make these. All you need to do is like sprinkle stuff on, and these you have to decorate them while the icing is still wet. That you just crumble everything onto the cookies. A little bit here, and a little bit there. And then at the very end, you just drizzle it with some pink icing.
I really, I really put my heart and soul into these recipes and I'm really proud of them and I hope you like them. If you give somebody something like that, it's the absolute best gift you can give. One of my friend's grandmother is 106. I was like, all right, I gotta send Grammy some cookies. And she was so excited. It made her whole Christmas. Grazie molto, grazie, molto delicioso. Grazie e buona Natale. Ti voglio bene assai, assai, assai.